had to create things. We had to wear our hair. Like most girls would wear three feet, we had to wear ten feet, and we had to exaggerate everything. And we wore the slits in our dresses because we danced, and we couldn't dance unless we had the slits. So we created all that stuff, the eyeliner. We had to be different. There were lots of other things going on, and, and that, that's always been the pattern of American music. You know, there's a spawning ground, and it does like a lap dissolve all over the country. I've seen that go on for 48 years, and it keeps coming like waves. And Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller came along. They did all kinds of things. Lester Sill and myself and Mike Stoller started a little record company in uh, L.A., very underfinanced, called Spark Records. The guys at Atlantic Records had heard our, our stuff. They got a hold of us and they said, look, you know, you, you're not selling any meaningful amount of records. They uh, convinced us to make records for them that they could sell. The first big success we had was Searching and Youngblood. Jewish kids that knew my culture better than most blacks knew that culture. And they amazed me. I would look at them like, who are you guys, man? How do you know how to write this kind of stuff? And it's true of what you're writing about. But it so happened they knew it, and it was correct and right on time. We used to live a semi-black existence. In fact, we thought of ourselves as black. Um, we were mistaken, but <laughs> that's what we wanted to be. We aspired to be uh, black and to to be able to make the music that was black and the poetry that comes from blues music. We had black girlfriends. We used to uh, constantly be in uh, totally black nightclubs and dance halls. And we were treated very courteously. I mean, sometimes people were amused you know, that uh, we might have been the only white faces in the joint that night, but no, no one was ever rude or aggressive or anything. No. is the music that was started because there was no instruments. So the uh, background singers had to do all the work. And that's why the bass singer would do boo do do boo do 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 boo do 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 See, I was a bass singer too. And <laughs> I used to walk up to, let's say, from 119th Street to 129th Street with the group of four Bs. And we would actually have a competition with the group whoever was in that block. And all you have to do is stand there and start singing and gather the crowd. And the others would come around. And you just actually have like a little duel between you and the group that's actually in that neighborhood. And it was like one of those um, fighting things without gloves. But I'm like the North Mountain. You know I'll bring up. I had a session to do with Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller. Uh, and they, uh, it was the Spanish holiday, as a matter of fact. And they asked me at the end of that session, so you have any other tunes that you've written? I said, yeah, I have this one that I showed to the Drifters. They don't want it. Yeah. So I showed him a little bit on the piano how it went. And he said, it's not bad. So he called all the musicians back in, and we did it right then and there. When the night has come and the land is done, and the moon is the only light we'll see. 